Previously, we learned how to send prompts to an AI and display the response. I can type a prompt, what is React, in the input field, click send, and we get the response back from our AI. Our implementation works great, but there's an important limitation you need to understand. AI models don't have memory. Let me refresh the page and show you what I mean. Watch what happens when I have a conversation. First, I'll ask, hi, I'm Vishwas. Who are you? The AI responds nicely with a greeting. Perfect. Now let me ask a follow-up question. What is my name? You can see that it has no idea who I am, even though I just prompted a second ago. This happens because each prompt is treated as a completely independent request, kind of like browsing the web in incognito mode. The AI starts fresh every time with zero memory of your last message. To build a proper conversational experience, we need to maintain an ordered history of all messages and include that history with every new prompt. Now, you might think this would require complex state management and lots of code, but the AI SDK makes it super simple. Let's learn how by building a chatbot. We'll approach this in two parts. First, creating a route handler that maintains conversation history. Then, building a chat UI to display the conversation. Let's start by creating our chat API route. In the API folder, create a new folder called chat. Inside, create route.ts. Start by defining an async host request handler with a request parameter. So export async function host, and we specify the request parameter. Now, unlike our previous routes where we got a single prompt from the request body, here we need to get an array of messages from the request body. So await request.json, we're going to destructure messages. Messages will be an array containing the entire conversation history. For TypeScript to understand what these messages are, let's import the UI message type. So at the top, import UI message from AI. And within the function body, we specify messages is of type UI message array. The UI message type represents messages that come from our UI. Now we need to stream a response. So let's import stream text from AI and OpenAI from AI SDK slash OpenAI. Within the function body, invoke the stream text function with an object with the model set to OpenAI, GPT 4.1 nano, and messages to messages. We will store the return value in a constant called result. But you should know that the messages from our UI may contain extra information that we need to render the UI. For example, a timestamp for when the message was sent or the duration it took to generate the response. However, the AI model is not interested in such information and only needs the core message content considering token input constraints and costs. To address this, the AI SDK provides a helper function. From the AI package, import convert to model messages. Now you can use it when passing messages to the stream text function. So convert to model messages are UI messages. This helper function strips away UI specific metadata like timestamps and converts messages to the format the AI model expects. You can see that TypeScript is now happy. We will return the streaming response using to UI message stream response. Finally, let's wrap this in a try catch block to handle any errors. Try block, catch error, we console.error, error, streaming, chat completion, and then return new response, fail to stream chat completion, status 500. That is our chat route handler. The key difference from our previous routes is handling an array of messages instead of a single prompt. Now for the UI. In the UI folder, create a new folder called chat and inside, create page.tsx. Let's start with the basic component structure similar to our previous routes. Use client directive at the top, export, default function, 
chat page. We'll start with a div container. We'll leave space for chat messages to be displayed. So messages will go here. And at the bottom goes the form. So form element with a div flex container with an input placeholder is equal to how can I help you and a button element that says send type is equal to submit. I'm going to style this with Tailwind classes and you can copy the code from my GitHub repo. We still have the div container, the form element, the div flex container within the form to place the input and the button side by side. The layout is identical to our previous routes. You can see this UI in the browser by navigating to slash UI slash chat. We have our input, how can I help you, and the send button. The next step is to make this form interactive. For chat functionality, we need to manage the input state ourselves. So at the top, import use state from React, and within the component, create a state variable called input, the setter function set input, and the initial value is an empty string. Now let's bind these values to our input element. Value is equal to input, and on change is equal to an arrow function where we get the event and we call set input, passing in event.target.value. Next, we need the chat functionality. Now the AI SDK provides a hook specifically for chat. Let's import it. Import use chat from AI SDK slash React. Invoke it within the component. By default, the API endpoint is slash API slash chat, which is exactly what we have created. Of course, I will show you how to change the default endpoint very soon. But this use chat hook returns an object with everything we need to handle chat. Let's start with messages. What does a messages array look like? It's actually quite complex, so I'm going to show you a simplified version that represents a basic chat conversation. Messages is an array of type UI message. The UI message type has three properties, ID, role, and parts. ID is a unique string identifier for each message, which helps track and reference specific messages within the conversation. Role indicates who sent the message. The value is user when the human sends a message or assistant when the AI responds. Parts is an array containing the actual content of the message. Each part is an object of type text UI part, which has a type and text property. Type is always set to text, indicating this part contains textual content. Text is a string that represents the actual text content of that part. Here is an example of a messages array to help you understand better. We are dealing with a simple chat conversation here. The user asks a question, so role is user, type is text, and the actual text is what is React. The AI responds with a simple answer, so the role is assistant. Type continues to be text, and text will refer to the response generated from AI. The user then asks a follow-up question, so role is user again. Type text, and the text is, can you give me an example? The AI responds with a more detailed answer, so role is assistant again. Type text, and the text, here is a simple React component. For now, we are just handling text parts with type set to text and text property set to the text content, but there are other types of parts which we will cover later in the course. But now that you understand this basic structure, let's render the messages array in our UI. So right above the form, curly braces, and we loop through the messages array using the map method. So messages dot map. We pass in a callback function. For each message, we render a div with the message ID as the key. So key is equal to message dot ID. And within the div, First, we'll display the role for that message. If the role is user, so message dot role is equal to user, we will display you. And if it's assistant, we'll display AI. Once we have the role, we loop through the parts array using the map method. 
so curly braces. And for each message, we map over parts. We pass in a callback function. Now remember, each part is an object, and at the moment, it has type and text properties. We will use a switch statement to handle the different part types. If the type is text, we display the text content. So back in our code, for each part, we add a switch statement. If part.type for case text, so if this is text content, we return a div tag rendering the text content. We'll also specify the key as message ID. So dollar curly braces, message.id followed by index. For any other case, we return null. I will also add the tailwind classes for styling. So on the outer div, a margin bottom four. On the role div, font semi-bold. And for the div that renders the part text content, white space pre-wrap. This might be difficult to wrap your head around, so let me explain the logic to render messages one more time. So messages is an array with ID, role, and parts. Parts itself is an array of objects. Each object has type set to text and text set to the actual content. So in our code, we start by looping over the messages array. For each message, we render the role, U or AI. And then for each message, we loop over the parts. If the part type is text, we render the text content. For everything else, we return null. This might seem a bit overkill at the moment, but trust me, it will make sense when we render other content types later in the course. All right, our messages will now render in the UI, but we haven't wired up the form yet. So let's destructure the send message function from use chat hook. This allows us to send new messages to the AI. Let's create a submit handler, which will be called when the form is submitted. So const handle submit, we get hold of the event, which is of type, react.form event, HTML form element. And within the function body, we will start by preventing the default form submission behavior. So e.prevent default. Next, we'll call send message with a property text set to our input value. We will also reset the input field to an empty string. So set input, empty string. Now bind handle submit to the form element. So form on submit is equal to handle submit. All right, our next step is to handle the different states for a better experience. From the use chat hook, destructure the status property. The status tells us if we are ready, submitted, streaming, or error. Let's use this to show a loading indicator right below messages. We will rely on Tailwind CSS to show a spinning animation. So if status is equal to submitted or status is equal to streaming, we're going to render a loading spinner. I'm going to paste the code to save us some time. It is basically to three div elements with Tailwind CSS classes. And while we're at it, let's also disable the button when we are not ready. So disabled status is not equal to ready. We've also added the necessary styles for disabled state. All right, next let's add error handling. The hook provides an error object. Let's destructure it. In the JSX, display the error message at the top. So error, and if it exists, we render a div tag, error.message. We'll also add some Tailwind CSS classes, text red 500 and margin bottom four. Finally, let's add stop functionality for longer responses. So destructure the stop function and update the button to show different options. If status is equal to submitted or status is equal to streaming, we're going to render the stop button. If that is not the condition, we render our send button. Perfect. We've built our chat interface piece by piece. Time to test it out. Navigate to slash UI slash chat in the browser and test the conversation flow. 
ask, Hi, I'm Vishwas. Who are you? Wait for the response. You see the loading indicator. And we also see the role. Hi, I'm Vishwas. Who are you? And the AI responds with, Hello, Vishwas. I'm ChatGPT, an AI language model created by OpenAI. Now, continue the conversation by asking, What is my name? It responds, Your name is Vishwas. How can I assist you today, Vishwas? It remembers my name is Vishwas because it has the entire conversation history. Now, what about tokens in this scenario? Let's go back to our route handler and add token tracking to show how chat affects usage. So result dot usage dot then, very similar to what we did previously, we get hold of usage. And we're going to log to the console, the message count, which is messages dot length, input tokens, which is usage dot input tokens, output tokens, which is usage dot output tokens, and finally total tokens, which is usage dot total tokens. Now watch the terminal as you chat. Hi, I'm Vishwas. Who are you? We get back a response. And you can see message count one, input token 17, output tokens 43, total 60. I'm going to follow up. What is my name? We get back the response. We see message count three, input tokens 72, output tokens 19, total 91. Do you know React? We get back a response. Message count five, input tokens 103, output tokens 54, total tokens 157. You can see the input tokens grow with each message because we send the entire conversation history each time. And if the number of tokens grow, so does the cost. This is one of the reasons why apps like ChatGPT and Claude have new chat buttons to reset when conversations get too long. But there you have it. We have successfully implemented an AI-powered chat interface. That was a lot of code, so let me quickly walk you through the implementation one more time. We started with the route handler. We created a post route handler that extracts the messages from the request body, converts them to the model format, and streams the response. We also added token tracking to show how chat affects usage. For the UI, we created a client component. We added a form with an input and a send button. We also added a div to display the messages. We manage the input state ourselves and use the use chat hook for everything else. The messages is an array of objects with an ID, role, and parts array. We loop through the messages array and display the role and parts. The status flag helps us show a loading indicator and disable the submit button when not ready. We also added error handling and stop functionality for longer messages. I hope you now understand how to build a chat interface with the AI SDK in Next.js.